I hope I am audible because I am generally not a loud person unless my code is not working, <laughs> which happens every other day. Uh, good evening, ladies, gentlemen, and developers. Uh, no offense meant, just the added respect for developers. Uh, as was mentioned in the introduction, my name is Gaurav Kitripal. I am coming all the way from the deserts of Rajasthan to attend DroidCon. And uh, going by the sessions that we have had so far, I can confidently say it's been worth it. And uh, I hope my session uh, continues to be friend. Thanks for coming in. Sorry? Thanks for coming in. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure is mine. A uh, couple of things. Uh, you'll, you'll notice a lot of visuals uh, in all of almost all of my slides. And then you'll see some text in uh, red occasionally. Uh, that's just meant to tickle your funny bones and I hope that works. Uh, so, uh, how many of you have actually heard about Accelerator Titanium? Okay, that's a sizable number. How many of you have downloaded it and tried using it? Not bad. Okay. Um, so, uh, I am actually a member of the Accelerator Titans community. It's basically a group of volunteers. Uh, who help spread the word on Titanium, who, who are basically contributors on the Titanium forum, who, who help uh, document Titanium API, and who uh, also increasingly are attending such events in order to educate developers on Titanium. I'm not sure how, how many of you were in the previous talk on PhoneGap, uh, which actually ended with the objective of PhoneGap rocks. Uh, this is definitely not the objective of this session. Uh, the objective is uh, to educate you on what Titanium can do, what Titanium cannot do, and when you should prefer native development and when, when you should prefer Titanium. So, this is a short agenda and uh, the text in red is uh, just to just a reminder, uh, post lunch session, uh, it's been two long days, so I hope I can keep you all awake. Uh, this is not sponsored by Tata T, but I generally like the Jaguri uh, slogan because it helps people, people stay awake. Uh, I'll be quickly walking through uh, an introduction. I've been introduced, so I would actually like to know more about the audience. Then I'll be giving you an overview of uh, what we plan to cover, the classical web versus native and the India versus Pakistan debate. Uh, what is cross-platform cross development? What is Titanium? What is the mobile architecture of Titanium? Uh, how you can do Android development with Titanium, what is Titanium Studio, how you can set it up, why Titanium, uh, a small case study and then I open for questions. Okay, so I have actually been introduced, so uh, let's phrase it uh, as questions for you. Any school or college dropouts here? Raise your hand. Wow, remarkable. School or college? And we have a Steve Jobs and a Bill Gates. Among us. Okay. Yeah, otherwise, developers are generally too focused on academics, they don't drop out, and when they end their careers, they are still developers. So, uh, I can drop out. Uh, how many of you are uh, on the wrong side of 30? Raise your hands. Okay. Uh, how many of you are below 30? So actually you are all on the wrong side of 30 because life begins at 30. So, uh, so yeah, I mean I've been working uh, for as long as I can remember and I, the first app actually I made, it's widely regarded as the ultimate killer uh, mobile app on all platforms. Uh, it's not Angry Birds, it's, uh, you can run it on feature phones, you can run it on smartphones, you can run, run it on any phone. So I'll give you a couple of hints and those are actually dirty hints. Uh, it's a three letter word. It's normally called a three letter word in India and it's normally called a four letter word in a four letter word in uh, the western countries. Okay. Yes, so the SMS is the right answer and uh, unfortunately I was, I happened to be at a conference and I spoke about three letter and four letter words. They didn't get it. I told them that uh, people in western countries use it all the time, we use it sparingly, and then I started to get dirty answers, so, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, it's, just in case you didn't know, they, they don't call it SMS there, they call it text, and that's the four letter word, so. 
Uh, WebOS, uh, this is a uh, Android conference, so I will not go into details, but there are two main reasons why I want to mention WebOS. Anybody has heard about WebOS? Okay, anybody has worked on WebOS? Be honest. <coughs> Nobody. Oh, there's one. Okay. So, uh, I thought I was the only one working on WebOS in India. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so the reason I took up WebOS was uh, A, uh, it's actually a platform. It's actually a mobile platform built entirely on web technologies. So it runs on JavaScript on a framework called Anio. And all the debate around web versus native and HTML versus Java or HTML versus Objective-C, these are, we are all talking about apps, but here is a platform which it itself is built on web technologies. And uh, in case you have used the touchpad or if you have used WebOS, you would know that uh, the kind of user experience it provides is actually at par with Android or iPhone. Uh, the other reason why I mentioned WebOS is because uh, I have tried my hands at literally all uh, mobile platforms wherever I found an opportunity to make money. Um, WebOS uh, launched earlier this year. Uh, I got in, I, I wrote two apps which were among the first hundred apps to be developed, uh, to be launched for the touchpad. And I made a lot of good money in the first two months. Uh, in fact, even more than what I usually make out of my Android apps uh, maybe in, in a year. Uh, then uh, the unexpected happened, HP killed WebOS and uh, same day they actually sent me a mail that I am actually the WebOS ambassador for India and they sent me a t-shirt, uh, I love WebOS. <laughs> <laughs> a few days back, uh, so I stopped communicating with them, a few days later I received another t-shirt uh, and actually I am wearing it now. And it has, a, it has a touchpad at the back so I proudly say that there was a time when WebOS was close to my heart and now is the time when it's close to my butt. So, uh, Android, iOS, uh, no questions. I mean, these are the two platforms where the money is. And uh, the only reason why you should deviate from these platforms is if you want to take risks like I did uh, and get free t-shirts. Uh, titanium, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been working, I've been uh, Following that platform for the last year or so, unfortunately, uh, I'm not paid, so I, I will not say Titanium Rocks. <laughs> Keen interest in cross-platform frameworks. So I've actually uh, tried my hand at almost uh, all frameworks that I've heard of. Uh, be it Titanium, PhoneGap, Sencha-Touch, uh, Romobile, and there are a few other others as well. Uh, that was primarily because uh, a lot of time I was actually doing trivial development which I think is an overkill if you do it on multiple native platforms and especially too if there is a website or a web application and you have to develop a native uh, counterpart application which does not involve any rocket science. Okay, so uh, this is purely out of uh, academic interest about the company founded in 2007 in a place called Atlanta where there are startups, 18 employees. So it's actually 100 plus, it's grown phenomenally and phenomenally and uh, over the next year they'll be growing at the same rate as India's population. So they may not have the 7 billionth baby but uh, I mean you can be rest assured you'll be hearing a lot more of Accelerator. They're headquartered at a place called Mountain View, they have a worldwide presence, uh, strong VCs so lots of funds in the bag. The icons that you see, the first one actually represents, can anyone tell me what that represents? If you have used something called, uh, there is another, sorry? Aptama. So, so that actually represents Aptama and uh, that's a company which Accelerator acquired some time back. So there used to be a IDA built on top of Eclipse platform called Aptama Studio. So that's now Titanium Studio. Uh, the other icon it just shows you can build on Macs, uh, PCs. The last one it shows that, uh, so there is a lot of talk about HTML5 uh, and uh, we have heard of a lot of frameworks. So PhoneGap is a good example of an HTML5 framework. Uh, companies are actually increasingly buying companies uh, which develop or use uh, HTML5 frameworks. So PhoneGap is a good example, I don't know why it was not mentioned but PhoneGap recently got acquired by Adobe. So that's one of the reasons Adobe is pushing for HTML5 now. So, uh, Accelerator similarly acquired a little known company called Particle Core and we will see what, what they produce on HTML5. Okay, so 
coming to the classical web versus native debate. How many of you here know HTML, JavaScript? How many of you know Java? How many of you know both? And how many of you know none? You should probably go out. <laughs> no. uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, so frameworks like uh, Titanium, PhoneGap, these these essentially bridge the gap between a web developer and a native developer. The web, as we know it, is one of the applications of the internet, but it's actually emerged as an unlikely hero. Um, the best part is you, you can quickly develop, uh, uh, if you quickly write code in HTML, JavaScript, it's it's actually cross-platform as, as long as you are implementing it as a, using open standards and uh, it's a web app. We'll, we'll come to cross-platform mobile apps a bit later. Open standards, we all know, uh, wherever you prefix the word open, it's actually uh, either HTML5 or if you prefix the word, if you suffix uh, something called a letter against open, it kills technologies like Flash. Uh, that's what Steve Jobs did uh, last year. Uh, so, um, Titanium, if you know web development, great. Uh, it's a platform which you should explore. Unfortunately, most developers, and it's probably a part of our education system that we are mostly taught maybe C, C++, Java, but there are not many colleges which actually would teach you HTML and JavaScript. So native actually um, gives a kick to developers. So they find it more challenging as compared to HTML, JavaScript, which is like, I mean, if I say I'm a web developer, yeah, you design websites, right? So uh, then there is another debate about performance, uh, and I'll come to this shortly, hardware interaction. Um, so in the last session also there was a question asked about uh, if, if you want to integrate the Android MDK with PhoneGap, I will not answer about PhoneGap, but if you want to do it with Titanium, it's a very bad idea. So anything that involves hardware or is very performance intensive, you should probably stick with native. So that's, that's where Titanium doesn't fit in. Triple play, uh, this is basically the future, uh, so it's going to be, it's, right now it's just mobile and social. Going forward, it's going to be mobile, social, and cloud. So you'll, you'll see a lot of apps interacting with their uh, cloud counterparts, be it Amazon Web Services, be it Google App Engine, and lots of other cloud players. Uh, the web has evolved, so has the mobile platform. Uh, so um, two years back, HTML was uh, was the was the way to build websites. It used to be deployed on web servers like uh, Apache. Now we are probably between the second and third stage right now. So you have frameworks in Java like uh, Spring, Hibernate, Struts, and there are application servers like uh, Apache Tomcat, and there is a WebLogic, WebSphere, uh, Sunman. We are now getting to a stage where middleware are getting increasingly important, and SaaS is actually beginning, just beginning to make its uh, presence felt. The SaaS, you can, as I mentioned, AWS, Google App Engine, these are all SaaS platforms. If you, if you look at the mobile counterpart, uh, till now it's been mostly uh, native SDKs, HTML5, it's now emerging out of a draft, it will soon be a standard. Cross-platform tools, that's where PhoneGap, all these tools come in. And eventually we believe that th this is coming down to an integrated mobile platform, one platform where you can do, and uh, as Ayushman mentioned, it's hybrid apps. So you can actually develop apps which use JavaScript, HTML, as well as native code. But we aren't there yet. Okay, so cross-platform development, it's, it's probably the most most abused term in uh, mobile development. Uh, so Java, I say it's evil because it's spoiled developers. It said uh, write code once and run everywhere, uh, which uh, actually it's not true at least in uh, mobile development because uh, when it comes to mobile cross-platform, at least in Titanium, it, it, it means that you can use a lot of UI code because there are wrappers for everything. So if there is a, if, for example, if there is a list view in Android, if there is a list view in iOS, Titanium would actually expose you something called a ti.android.list view and a ti.iphone.list view. So they would basically uh, be wrappers which can actually let you reuse re re your code, but there is a catch, you have to have a good design, there is no magic wand which would reuse all of your code. The objective is to provide the best-in-class experience on every platform. Uh, the objective is not to write once, run everywhere. It is to write once, but to be able to adapt it to run everywhere. So, uh, 
Titanium, it's a classical <coughs> definition of Titanium. It's an open source framework, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. If you haven't seen the site, the Twitter, the source code is actually openly available. This is their standard sales switch. That's an integrated mobile platform for enterprise and consumer applications. So there are three main entities and uh, the company sits in between. Community, which I'm a part of, customers uh, who get apps built on Titanium and then absolutely to ties up with a lot of companies. Okay, so what is Titanium? So it's basically uh, any Titanium application can be divided into four parts. There is There are two parts of which which actually you you, you do and there are two parts which Titanium provides. So you actually write the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, there is Ruby and Python supported as well, but I've never used them, so I'll, I'll probably not cover them. <coughs> then uh, you are supposed to write the HTML, CSS, JavaScript code, then you invite, invoke the wrapper APIs, which are uh, actually an abstraction for all the native functionality. There is a language, OS Bridge, uh, that compiles all the web code into native application code, and I'll talk about this in detail. Uh, then there is a runtime shell that packages the application for cross-platform distribution, so generate your APKs and the IPAs and the app files. Okay, so mobile architecture, uh, which is kind of similar to what I just walked through. Uh, your application sits on top, it's all HTML, JavaScript code. Then there are the wrapper APIs, so I, uh, UI API, phone API, optional modules, there is a bridge for each, uh, there is a bridge for Java, there is a bridge for JavaScript, there is the native uh, OS uh, below, that, below that. And just to give you an example of the kind of mapping it has to UI components, there are uh, wrappers for navbar, tabbar, no, mostly most of the uh, standard UI components that you would find on both platforms. Okay, so coming to Android development with Titanium. How many of you believe that uh, the UI is the most important aspect of a mobile application? It's one of them. Okay. And those who don't believe that it's it's one of the most, uh, what do you believe is the most important part of a mobile application, if not the UI? Okay. So we have consensus that UI is important. Uh, characteristics of an Android interface, uh, there is a touch, so there is no there is no, your apps need, don't need to have a back button, so there is touch as well as hardware, there is a back button. Activities are the backbone of your Android application. Interfaces are less homogeneous, there are, uh, there are phones of NDPI, MDPI, HDPI, Super HDPI, there are tablets 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11 inches. Uh, and as a developer, it, it often becomes a nightmare because uh, you, you have to read the guidelines all the times if you have to support uh, certain devices. Uh, as compared to Android, uh, iOS is a bit more structured. It's all touch centric. There are gestures. And Apple actually strongly encourages uniformity in UI conventions. Uh, it's, it's slightly changed uh, with the launch of the iPad and the Retina display, but it's still a lot more consistent simply because Android follows a, a multi-vendor, uh, multi-model philosophy. So if you are to bridge the, bridge the gap between the two interfaces and design a truly cross-platform UI, what should you do? Okay, so you should focus on the primary task. Uh, you should never try and uh, enforce uh, an iPhone UI scheme on an Android application and vice versa. Ideal advice is that you, you would probably start off with the same uh, phase that you would do with a native application. Sketch out the information architecture for your apps, uh, do the storyboarding, draw some wireframes, and based on those exercises when you get down to the actual design, just reuse whatever you can reuse. Okay, so this is all Android. Uh, this has nothing to do with uh, Titanium as such. Uh, just a quick recollection of how Android applications work. There are one or more activities. There are intent filters. You need to be very careful of the API level that you use. Uh, intents, actions, categories, MIME types, class names. Okay, so uh, there is a task uh, stack. Uh, your app is a well-defined entry point. There are systems as well as custom intents. This is all standard stuff, just a brief uh, refresher in case. Okay, can anybody tell me the uh, Android life cycle, the app life cycle? What is the first stage? Okay, what's next? On start. On create and then on stop? On start. On start, okay. What's next? On 
So that's kind of good enough. Um, just checking. Uh, user launches the app. Uh, your intent is fired with a category and an action, and I'm not sure it's very well visible. So, okay. So, what do you do with AI? Uh, as I said, the fundamental principle of Titanium is to create a wrapper for everything that's there on the net native platform. So you actually have custom JavaScript activities, uh, which which are a wrapper of your native activities. Uh, how you how, how would you configure your activities in an Android app, in a native Android app? Yeah. So there is a counterpart called diapp.xml in Titanium, which is basically the uh, the Titanium's version of Manifest, Android Manifest. Everything else in most cases follows a one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, this this doesn't hold true when uh, Android comes up with a new version, like for example Android 4.0 or for example iOS 5. Uh, that happens, but there is there is a definite uh, lag uh, to get to that that stage. Uh, so you would have, so most of the and all of the Android stuff resides in a package called di dot Android. Uh, to create an intent, you would simply call di dot Android dot create intent. To access your current activity, you can prefix it to di dot Android current activity. Uh, you can you can act, for callbacks, you can call this and activity dot start activity for result. Uh, so, like we would place your, uh, in a native application you would place your images in the resources folder, here also there is a counterpart resources folder. Uh, this is probably not very well visible, but I mean this is uh, in short your titanium version of uh, the manifest file. This is how you can create an activity and an, and an intent. Okay, so how many of you have actually attended yesterday's session by James, which was all about cross, how to make cross-platform apps suck less? Okay. So uh, he actually brought up a valid point uh, that there is a, and it was deeply discussed in the last session as well. Uh, I believe uh, you actually brought that up. So <coughs> there is a, there is a fundamental difference between a, how a native app work and how a app built on web technologies would work. So there is something called a rendering engine which would be typically on your browser, it would be WebKit or some other engine. Similarly, there is a JavaScript engine which, which runs for all such frameworks. Currently, Titanium uses a framework called Rhino which is uh, which is efficient but it's, it, it leaves a lot to be desired. So ideal would be to use the same JavaScript engine V8 that's used in Chrome, Chromium, Node.js and others. <coughs> Which can actually lead to a 2x performance increase, and in many cases, depending on your application, it can go up to 10 to 15 times. So that's some of the criticism that uh, comes across for most of the cross-platform frameworks that uh, my apps aren't performing well or that it's slow. That's primarily because it's doing a lot of stuff. So you are writing HTML and JavaScript; it act, it actually mapping them uh, to native implementation. So there, there is a there is a significant amount of processing involved in that bridge. And that's what causes the slight uh, delay. Uh, some links. Uh, this you can probably look at it when it is shared. <coughs> slide show is shared. Okay, so what is Titanium Studio? As I mentioned in the beginning, uh, Aptana was built on the Eclipse platform. It was a multilingual editor supporting HTML, JavaScript, and plethora of other languages. The company was acquired by Accelerator and they named it to Titanium Studio. They added a lot more enhancements. So, for example, if you need to look at uh, if a if the there was another question in the last session, which was that how do I know if a particular API is available or not? So, typically in JavaScript, I mean, if I if I need to know if a if, if a Java class has all the methods, I would use TypeID. So that is one thing which is available in Titanium Studio. This is a classical architecture diagram of what all you can do. So. I've actually not touched upon the Titanium desktop, but you can actually build only desktop applications in Titanium as well. Um, and then Titanium Studio lets you build desk. There is a debugger which uh, uh, which um, which helps you debug your applications both for Android as well as iPhone. And then you can package your apps as well. 
Setting up Titanium Studio is actually quite simple. Go to Accelerator.com. It's free for Mac as well as Windows. Um, on Mac, you can simply drag it to your applications. This is how it looks. Uh, I don't like it, but that's the way it is, and that's the way they decided that it should. So it's Eclipse, then it's Aptana, and that's it. then it's Titanium. So to make it look different, they actually inverted the color scheme. Some people like it, some hate it. I am in the latter category. Uh, this is how you would create a new project. You will just go to File, New, Mobile Project, and it would create uh, an empty framework for you. Uh, so this again is how you would create a new project. So when you create a project, you can actually specify what are your targets. It would create the required files. And through preferences, you can select Titanium, and that's where you can actually configure which SDK you want to use. Okay, so why should you use Titanium? Uh, so there, there is actually, uh, so the question of why, there is a very good example. If you've seen an ad on TV, uh, there's I think two or three ads in which they show a ship and there is a gentleman explaining about it and at the end of the ad, the person asks, Kitana de hai. So that's what I mean. So unless you see a good reason to adopt a new platform or uh, unless there is there is a good reason why it would reduce your development time, you should not commit to a platform. Good part about Titanium is the core SDK is free. Uh, I hope you can resemble uh, the icon below uh, yesterday. Uh, it was there in the party. Uh, I'm sure lots of you enjoyed it. Uh, it's open source under Apache 2.0 license. There is a thriving developer community. Um, if you need, if you're a larger organization and you want to partner with Accelerator, there is commercial training and support available as well. Okay, why Titanium? I strongly believe that uh, between native and uh, cross-platform app, there is a definite sweet spot. And unless you hit that sweet spot, you will actually end up uh, designing the app on the wrong platform. So, as I said, I mean, if there are apps which require a lot of hardware interaction or uh, which are performance, very performance intensive, Titanium is not a good fit. If there are enterprise apps which actually deal with a lot of web services or mashups, if there are uh, social utilities, uh, if you want to, if there is a brand, if you have a Facebook page for it, if you have a Twitter feed for it and you want to design a lightweight mobile app, Titanium is a perfect fit. Casual low-end games, uh, don't ever try uh, Cocos 2D or uh, the Android Ants engine with Titanium, uh, it will be a nightmare. Anything that requires cross-platform support and uh, if, you, if you can visualize a web application for it, Titanium is a good fit. Uh, this is, these are the stats uh, as to where Titanium currently stands, so 200,000 developers, 25,000 apps. Some of the top apps, uh, some of the apps built on Titanium, which have actually made it to the top 10 or top 100. Uh, NBC was in the number one iPad app. It's built on Titanium and it stayed on top for quite some time. I'll actually touch upon Triplingo. It's a classical case study of Titanium. Before that, uh, another reason why you should adopt Titanium is uh, uniformity in UIs. So, um, you should actually maintain platform identity. You can actually get away with uh, an Android app. You can put a back button on it. It will be uploaded to market, but then users will come back and say, he, he has a, a back button with an Android app. So that's why, and Google will eventually pull your app out. So that's why it, it's important to maintain platform identity. Uh, so back button for Android is just an example. This is, uh, this is an example of how your same uh, code would look like on an Android phone as well as on an iPhone. Case study, okay. So, uh, Trip Lingo, uh, the objective was to design an app for travelers which can actually uh, translate questions and I'm glad if you cannot see what the boy is actually doing. So, because that's not very aesthetic. So, I mean, anyway, so the this gentleman is actually uh, trying to ask his way to the bathroom and the boy is making some weird gestures. So the Triplingo team decided, okay, they'll, they'll probably start off uh, doing this natively. So the whole team sat down and there were some hardworking developers who worked throughout the night. They wrote stories, they draw sketches, and they finally built an Android app, which was great, but it took two months. And then they had to do the same thing for iPhone and you would probably have to 
spend a few more nights like that. So then they decided they'll actually try out Titanium. And uh, with a with a reasonably big team, they actually uh, following a classical agile uh, approach, they actually iterated upon it and they actually built out. They actually released 50 minor versions of the app in two weeks, and the result was a better looking app, which actually worked just as well on iPhone as well as Android. I would like to repeat, this was an app which does not require any hardware or there were no major performance constraints and it worked wonderfully well. Okay, so I think that is it. Uh, I can briefly show you the Amelie looking Titanium Studio. And this is how it looks like. Uh, So I actually had it working, but uh, we had a bit of a disaster yesterday in the uh, honeycomb lab sessions and I tried upgrading my Eclipse and now I'm left with, I, sorry, I tried upgrading my uh, Android SDK and given the condition of Wi-Fi, I, I no longer have an SDK. So unfortunately, I won't be able to demo anything. I think we can go back to the last slide. I've asked a few questions, so now is the time for you to return the present <coughs> Um, questions? Yeah. Uh, I have like question like I tried out the phone gap before uh, for this uh, cross platform. Now if you see the titanium, so every the different APIs for Android, iOS uh, is there in a separate package. Uh, means when I end up writing code, like I have to say that okay, this code goes to Android and this code goes to iOS. Now how it makes a cross platform like same code cannot run in two different without modification. Um, I didn't really understand your question. Yeah, for example, you are referring to that ti.android yeah. and ti.iphone, okay? Yeah, so for example, now uh, in phone gas, just take an example, say, if I want to open a camera, so it does not need to say me like, I'm opening camera in Android or iOS, it just detects so there are actually classes. a common set of classes. Activity is actually specific to Android, so that's why it's under di.android. But all the common classes are actually generic, so you can use them in iPhone as well as Android. Yeah, but like uh, if you just end up using it, again activity, all the things, then you can direct write in Java rather than having a wrapper on the JavaScript. Yeah, and if you are only building for Android, I mean, objective is if you are using uh, Titanium, I mean, if the end objective should be to develop on multiple platforms. Yes. Or, or, or only if you are more comfortable with JavaScript than Java. Okay, so it means you can mix both like uh, activity with the uh, cloud, like uh, common classes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so as I see it, uh, people usually put phone gap, titanium, uh, sensha, all in the same bucket and the comparison kind of blows up everything. You know? So what I wanted to know is uh, how is, what kind of a, a solution is titanium uh, trying to deliver to the market which is not addressed by a combination of say sensha and phone gap? Yeah, so actually you, you answered the question yourself. So titanium is actually trying to be an end-to-end -end player. So whether it's the back end, whether it's the UI. Uh, the end objective is to just use one SDK, be done with the UI, be done with the business logic, all your code in one SDK. And that's actually one of the reasons why a lot of people are using it with phone capital. Um, so, um, yes, it helps uh, create cross-platform application between Android and uh, iOS. But uh, does it also help in uh, you know the various resolution of screens uh, which you find within iOS and uh, Android? Uh, unfortunately, that remains a pain point, so that is something which as a developer you need to handle, but there are APIs which let you check uh, that, but at the end of the day, it's the, still the same exercise, if you are developing for Android, you need to test on multiple resolutions, multiple devices. No scripts, no, um, you know, automated, uh, automation. Uh, as far as I know, that's still a pain point. I think uh, device anywhere, the motion can offer two solutions in that space. So device anywhere is actually independent of whether you are using titanium or whether yeah. you are doing native developer. Yeah. So that's actually two yeah. solutions. Yeah. And uh, usually in web development, uh, when we try to access restful web services, we face uh, cross-domain issues. 
So doesn't titanium does that issue is there really resolved? Exactly. No, I have actually done a lot of applications which do that and I have never faced any issues. If there are any specific issues that you think arise, mm. because end of day it's on JavaScript. I mean, so whether it's XML, whether it's JSON, whether you are firing a post request, everything works as it would in JavaScript. If there were any specific concerns, maybe I can address them individually. Yeah, any other questions? Yeah, can we combine um, this titanium and native develop, uh, native code? Yeah, so that's actually uh, a good question, and that's something which I think PhoneGap does at the moment. That's uh, that's recently come out in a release of titanium. Uh, it's, I think it's still in beta, so it's not available to public, but it's available to us titanium uh, as titans. So I think you can expect it to be available within the next month or so. But uh, as a, as of uh, as of what I know, it's still pretty buggy, and that's the reason why it's in beta. Is there any reverse engineering uh, uh, allowed in this titanium platform? Uh, for example, uh, you have uh, uh, let's say uh, Android code or Android application, and you want to convert it to uh, iPhone. Uh, Directly from Android to iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you need titanium? <laughs> I mean, uh, I didn't really understand. Yeah, the Java code. Yeah, yeah. can you uh, from the Java code? Can you uh, reverse engineer and you know, uh, essentially create HTML and JavaScript? <laughs> no, unfortunately, that's, that's a support. That's a good idea. There's there's a good idea for a startup. <laughs> I saw the NBC application you you but uh, I found I actually checked the application on the App Store and I found the application is looks like very much native application. So I wanted to know what what sort of UI improvements they have done and it's all about XML they have used in the yeah. whole application. Yeah, that's actually not developed by me, so I, I cannot take the credit for it. But I, I mean it's featured on the Accelerator website, so I'm sure it's all that yeah. Any more questions? Rather than Java to iOS code, is there a way to like reverse engineer titanium Android code to titanium iOS code? That's not possible. So, in fact, can you uh, suggest something like if there are few things like I know it should be like back button mm -hmm. or something like that. Like there are few things, right? Where it is obvious that in Android it should be there and in iOS it will be there. Mm -hmm. So once you do that in Android, then it should probably queue iOS code easily, or at least framework should be there. Where you can customize it. know there is there is no mechanism to basically be able to convert Java code into uh, JavaScript, and I am not sure if that's the intention anyway. Not a Java code to object is just writing in code which I have. I am not writing where. Uh, yeah, so I mean that's already a part of the framework. So if you if you create your UI components, Titanium by itself will not create a hardware back button for you unless you want to do it and. Unless you want to do it. Okay. There's a community edition that you said. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Is there a corresponding uh, uh, commercial edition? Also? Yeah, so there is a professional edition which is paid, and uh, so that's uh, uh, that's actually not free. And the added benefits that you get is that you you can actually become uh, uh, accelerator titanium uh, accelerator titan yourself. So then you get uh, leads for projects for apps. You can actually do a certification uh, that they give you a badge and lots of other stuff. It's kind of same. The, the major difference is that there is something called a, a module marketplace uh, where there are paid third party modules which you can integrate with your app. So that's not available to community members. But as such, the third party applications which you are creating for uh, and the users or enterprise uh, customers. Can be. Yeah, it's it suffices. So I started off with community edition, and then I got it uploaded to the profession. Okay, but, but uh, as for the IE and the features are concerned, there's no. Uh, no, there's no IE. Um, any more questions? Um, okay, so so let's wrap the session. Thank you so much, Mr. Gold, for coming up. Uh, and any more questions, you know where to catch them up.